Now, a lot of people give me crap about using a swing arm hydrometer. Hey, what's up, reefers? I don't test often, but when I do, I wear my reef trigger shirts from Japan and use some of the best test kits on the market. Let me show you what I have. First of all, you know it's quality when I have a hydrometer in the test kit box. Now that aside, I do have a refractometer, henna elk and calcium checkers, the henna pH testers, the phosphate checker, this is really old actually, and also a magnesium and calcium test kits from Salifords. All right, so those are my A team in terms of test kits. Right here is B team. Uh, this is my backup. Uh, I got the high range pH test kits. I got, I didn't even know I got the nitrate test here. I just found out. Um, I actually just ordered the Red Sea Nitrate Pro test. And it will be here in two days, but I have not really used that one. Ammonia test kits. I got a lot of um, calibration fluid for a uh, refractometer. Uh, the reason I have this, actually I got, look at this, I got this one as well, is because I actually bought the Milwaukee one, the one that's like $150 that a lot of people like to use as a green one. But for some reason, I could not get a proper reading with the fluid that came with it. So I bought different fluid, thinking maybe the fluid is bad. But even with the different fluids, it's still measuring off. Uh, so I just returned it. I've just been using the hydrometer and the refractometer to double check. And I'll show you exactly how I use all the stuff that I use currently. Let's go. So I'll start off by saying that Hannah Instrument did send me a couple test kits. Now I did buy the elk checker and the uh, phosphate checker with my own money because I really like it. And I actually bought a couple reagent as well. But after meeting Kevin at Magda, he thought that maybe I'd like to try out the pH tester as well as the calcium checker as well. Initially I was a little hesitant taking the calcium checker because like it has some bad press in the past. But uh, it turns out mostly to be user error, meaning that it needs really precise amount of liquid from your tank, as well as using proper RODI water. Just the RODI water, water from your RODI system is not enough. It needs to be completely clean. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when we test for calcium. But for now, usually the first thing I do is that uh, if I have not used a pH checker in a while, I would rehydrate it using the uh, storage solution first. So I would bust this open and prepare the uh, storage solution and soak it for about half an hour first before I start using the pH checker. Now you don't need to do this every single time, it just if you have not used it for a long time. Uh, and so I know some people actually keep them in storage solution, they don't they just put it away so the probe does not dry off. But in my case, because I use a pH checker once in a while, I usually just let it dry out and I'll just revitalize it with storage solution. And there's no problem with the drying out as long as you give it time to rejuvenate. All right, so here we go. This is the storage solution uh, for pH and OLB electrodes. Uh, basically, these are the same thing uh, for controller as well. You know how you got a probe with a little glass bulb, I'll show you in a little bit. You don't want them to dry out. And if they do dry out, just Put them back into storage solution um, to rejuvenate them. So here's a pH tester. You see how there's like a glass bulb right there? You do not want to be rough with that. You don't want to scratch it up. It has a layer, it has a, some coating on it. You don't, definitely don't want to touch it with tissue and stuff like that. Uh, they do have a cleaning solution if you need to clean it. So don't use paper towel. Uh, but for now, because I haven't used it in a while, I'm just gonna let it sit in this uh, storage solution for about half an hour while I do all the tests and we'll come back to this. One hour later. All right, so next up, we got the pH helper. With that, let's put on the filter and we'll come over here. Uh, see, so let's turn this guy on. There we go. Okay, so it's a 98% battery, let's dip it in. So when it is properly moisturized <laughs> and vitalized, it's gonna, the number is gonna hop around a little bit and then it's gonna stabilize. You see that that's a little, um, the little icon flashing in the corner once it stop, you know the reading is accurate, so it's gonna take a little bit. And this come at a good time because like recently I took out the e coral controller simply because I want the back to be clear for the awesome background lights. And um, the controller was having some interference when it's down in the sump because of all the different gear down there. Okay, look at this. So the icon is no longer flashing, this is stable. So it's telling me that the pH is about 8.1. Temperature is about 79.1. Not bad. If there's one test kit that I like the most, it's the HANA Elk Checker. This is by far my favorite test kit. Super painless, super clear, super easy, well worth the money. Uh, I think it's like about $40 or something like that. This makes testing elk painless. Uh, 
there's no reason you will not test out if you have the hand test kit. Before I put it away, you should have rinse them in our DI water and that's just our DI water right here. Let me just rinse it one more time. And I would fill it with tank water up to the 10 millimeter mark. And to do that, usually I just go to the tank. So to clean this, usually I just straight up rinse the vial in the tank. I do it a couple times to make sure I did the cap as well so there's no LDI water left over. Uh, some of you guys are probably shaking your head, but it's, it's been working for me. All right, so of course, if you're any sane or appropriate person, you'll probably use a clean pipette to do this, but this has worked well for me. Uh, basically, I just kind of dip the vial in, try to get 10 millimeter, perfect. Make sure there's no watermark on the surface of the vial at all. And then we're gonna turn it on. C1. And I like to leave the 10 millimeter marker facing front just so that we're doing it at the same location. Doesn't really matter, but I like to. All these has been rinsed uh, after use last time. And we're gonna draw it up to this point. Perfect. Squirt them like P into the vial. And I almost used the big cap on the bio. And let's see what it says. We're gonna do it inverted about five times. I'm an overachiever, so I go a little bit more. I don't think it matters that much. I'm really curious uh, what the level is, and I wanna make sure there's no air bubble. It seems like it's all good. And again, 10 millimeter facing forward. Probably doesn't matter, but I just like to do it that way because I have OCD. And we'll press a button and we'll wait together and see what the alkalinity level is. 8.0, perfect. That's what I'm aiming for, perfect. So I think the, the current dosing regimen is good. The amount is good, it's sustaining. Uh, so at this point, usually I will use my app. Where is my phone? Because I don't usually test, but when I do, I like to brag about it. Uh, so today we are doing alkalinity and we got to our target of eight safe results. Bam! And it'll tell me how I'm doing um, in terms of trend. This is, this is Aquamate, Aquarimate, by the way. I think it's, um, it's only iOS. Uh, and every time I post a screenshot of this app, everybody asks, what is this? So is this Aquarimate? I think it's $10 in, in the app store. It's quite expensive, but unfortunately with iOS, there's not too many options. In Android, I believe uh, there's like Aquarium Note or something that's really similar. All right, guys, the next test I'm gonna do is calcium. And this is the pain in the ass. There's no way around it. Uh, I also have the Cellifer Calcium. So uh, once in a while I would do both, but today I think I'll just do the Hanna because I've done the uh, Cellifer recently and they're close enough and uh, they're consistent enough that I trust both of them. As you can see, this box is huge. And again, I've been avoiding the Hanna Checker one because there, there was some issue with uh, the previous version, but they have fixed that issue by providing this really special pipette. Uh, so before, you need to take sample water of like 0.1 milliliter and with a regular syringe like this, it's just not possible to make it too accurate. And this one, uh, as long as you pull it, it's straight up point, it's not what it says right here, uh, it's exact amount each time. So I wish they would make similar pipette for a larger volume like this. All right guys, this one's not gonna be fun. So first we're gonna take one milliliter from this reagent right here. And to do so, I have this guy already cleaned. And we'll just draw it to one milliliter. Perfect. Okay, so we got that. Now, the next step is to use our ODI water to add it all the way to 10 milliliter. Okay, now here's where a lot of people did it wrong. So when I read that our ODI water, I just used whatever is uh, coming out from my ODI system. But that's not the case. You actually need perfectly clean ODI water. For example, like the Diana nice water coming from uh, Hanna or get distilled water from the supermarket. It doesn't have to be anything super special, but it just has to be super clean. And you fill it all the way up to the 10 milliliter. And this again is a lot of where a lot of people did it wrong. They just use uh, regular ODI water from the ODI system. But the problem is that sometimes there's stuff collected in there. It's not perfectly clean, at least not compared to uh, uh, these lab grade ones or distilled water you buy from supermarket. If the curves a little bit, you're looking you're looking at the bottom of the curve to see where it is. 
All right, that's about good. Invert it three to five times to mix. Make sure there's no air bubble. Turn on the checker. Put this in. 10 milliliter facing front because I'm superstitious. And we wait. Okay, ready for a second reagent. Okay, here's where this pipette comes to play. I like to still clean a couple times before using it, just in case, but it's thoroughly clean last time. So I just press it down, let go, and that should be perfect amount for water in here. We're gonna open this up. You got like about 10 minutes to do this portion. We're gonna add the tank sample water. There you go, perfect. And then when you prepare this little thing right here, and now this thing, you gotta follow instruction. Make sure all the reagent is at the back corner, right? And then fold it this way. And you see the dotted line to cut. This will make things a lot easier for you. So just follow it right here. And I, I was talking to Kevin and, and Magna saying that, hey, why don't they make it like those, um, instant coffee tube shape, right? But they say that uh, this kind of packaging is used for a lot of scientific uh, reagent. So it just makes a little bit more sense to produce them like this. I'm like, okay, all right, well, if I follow instruction on how to cut it, it's actually not that bad. It's pretty easy to pull in. Uh, you make a little funnel up front like this, and perfect. Now I just dump everything in here. There you go. So here we go, you got this little I feel like a mad scientist, man, every time I do this. And we'll shake vigorously for 15 seconds to make sure everything dissolves. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. And then we're gonna wait 10 to 15 seconds to make sure all the bubble escapes so it does not affect the reading. All right, looks good. Let's do it. My target is about 440. I see what calcium is at. Four, five, four, not bad at all. And let's see, calcium, four, five, four. And we're gonna brag about it because what is life? Boom. Next up, we got the magnesium kits from Cellifert. So Cellifert's test kits are really well regarded. A lot of people like them. So I really prefer either Cellifert or Hannah's for the most part. Uh, whenever possible, I go Hannah just so that it's a little bit easier. Uh, usually, they tend to be a little bit easier except for the calcium kit. The calcium kit is pretty complicated, uh, but it's a toss up between the Cellifert and the Hannah's. But for now, magnesium, you got the Cellifert kits, and we're gonna get to work. Alright, so just like before, before I pack everything away, everything was clean by the water, uh, but I just rinsed the the syringe in the tank water. Again, just make sure it's absolutely clean and clear. So we drop two milliliter of water right here. And then we add five drops of MG1, the first reagent. Usually I like to invert it and do one drop outside to make sure I get a full drop. And we'll do five drops here. Okay, that's five drops. And we're going to swirl this gently for 30 seconds. And I don't think you want to watch me do it for 30 seconds, so speed up. All right, so I got a cheat sheet in front of me. Next, we're gonna add one spoon of MG2 powder. Here's a spoonful. All right, get in there. All right, so we good. All right, here's the fun part. So basically, uh, we'll keep adding stuff from MG3 into this test vial until it changes color. And I roughly know where it's gonna be, so I'm gonna just drop a bunch in there. And it's actually gonna ch change that to either gray or blue, depending whichever first. Anytime now. Anytime now. Oh, there we go. You see how obviously it changed to blue? There we go. Okay, so what, what happened now is like, I look at the remaining amount. It's 0 0.1, 0 0.15. And then we'll look here. 0 0.15 is 
1280. So the magnesium is quite low, 1280. And of course, we're gonna input it here first. Interesting, consumption is pretty high for magnesium. Last and certainly not least, we're gonna test the salinity. Now, a lot of people give me crap about using a swing arm hydrometer, okay? Uh, what I usually do is uh, I kind of rinse it out to make sure it's not caked up with dry salts a couple times with the tank water, okay? And then I'm gonna fill it up gently and shake it a little bit, make sure there's no little micro bubble at the bottom because if there's bubble at the bottom, it's gonna stick to the swing arm and it's gonna lift it. It's not gonna be accurate. So now it's looking at like 1.025, right? But usually swing arm, you plus 0.001. So it's really 1.026. It's, it's dipping slightly, maybe 1.0255. And usually I'll do one more reading to make sure. Make sure I didn't fudge it up the first time. Shake it out a little bit. Some people like to tap it, but I only got one hand right now. And this swing arm hydrometer I have, I've had for a long time, and this is accurate. It has been really consistent for me. Uh, so usually I just rely on this, especially during water water change. I just uh, use this for the new water. It's really quick and easy. I know a lot of people hate it, but if you know what you're doing, I feel like you can you can as long as it's consistent, it'll be all right. And I know it's up, it's high by 0.001. Um, so we're gonna double check with hydrometer today just to see how accurate this is. Sometimes you do have to calibrate uh, with the fluid. But same deal, I'll use a pipette to get some tank water. Like always, I like to kind of squeeze out a little bit a couple times just to make sure there's nothing, uh, no residue in there. And I'll do like two to three drops. Come over here and do it. One, two, three. And then we're gonna slap this down and we're gonna look into a source of light. And it's 1.026 on the dot. 1.026 specific gravity, just as I said with the hydrometer. Uh, so obviously, refractometer. A lot of people say it's more accurate, but then you don't know when it goes out of um, calibration. Uh, so I think every equipment has its failure point, uh, but I just feel like swing arm gets a lot of hate. <laughs> Hey, what works for me may not work for you. There's the uh, refractometer, and then there's those things that you can put a little water in and got a little test thing that was like $150, $200. Uh, so that one actually turned out to be inaccurate for me, and that's why I returned it. Now, one big question is the Milwaukee one and the Hannah one look similar, almost identical. Are they the same component? Answer is no, it's not. So I was talking to Kevin from Hannah. Basically, they purchased the same mold, right? But the in internal could be totally different. They don't know what's going on. There's no no collaboration between Hannah's and Milwaukee. Uh, they have their own company. It just so happened that they use the same mold. Um, so it's not that Hannah's using the same thing and just kind of white labeling it and jacking the price up. Uh, so that's totally not the case. However, the Milwaukee one did not work out for me. That's why I return it and I'm sticking to the tried and true. And I can use these to cross check each other. Uh, Swing on for me for something really quick and then refractometer for something when I want to have make sure I'm 100% accurate. So there it is. All right guys, to put a little spin on this, I actually have a ATI ICP test ready to go right here. So right after filming this, I'm gonna fill out all these test tubes and then we're gonna compare results between the ATI ICP test versus this hobby grade test kit to see if the results are comparable. All right guys, I'll keep you guys posted and I'll see you guys next week. Now we're going to try to place these plants and this piece of wood into the tank.